Good afternoon, traders. It's Bill Baruch with Blue Line Futures, and this is what's moving. You're seeing equity markets roar higher here. This is the melt up. Banks, industrials playing catch up with tech. The S&P gained about 40 points. The Nasdaq gained 40 points too, but uh, the Nasdaq just blew that record high. And this is, again, it's the melt up here in the S&P. Eight sessions in a row, you've seen the S&P and Nasdaq finish positive. Uh, Russell gained good ground as well. This started in the overnight. Chinese services data got a 55, a strong number, uh, lifted risk sentiment. And then in Europe, uh, services PMI data was not as bad as expected. It came in at 30 versus 28. Now, 30 is a dismal number. Do not get us wrong there. 50 is the uh, expand contraction zone. So below 50, that's a big, big contraction. But again, not as bad as expected. And then where it picked up, though, the market picked up with ADP payrolls, uh, 2.7 million jobs lost, and they were looking for 9 million. So this number is a lot better than expected. Non-farm payroll still comes Friday. That's the official number. And then ISM non-manufacturing. This is the services read that everybody looks closely here uh, to start the new month for the previous month. So May's number came in better than expected too. And that just continued. It was a green light for, through the rest of the session. Uh, the S&P chewed through some strong resistance right around 3107, 3114. And again, banks, industrials led the way. Uh, tech, there were some good parts of tech, but overall taking a little bit of breather um, right below that record high. Let's take a look at the heat map here. But um, banks, you can see JP Morgan up 5.5%, Bank of America 4.5%, industrials across the board, a lot of them up 3 to 4%, um, and the energies too, Exxon up 4%. But you can see tech, I mean, overall, they were up, a Apple up half a percent, and Microsoft quarter, a Amazon a quarter. Uh, Facebook had a good day yesterday, gave some of that back. Um, but some components within tech did perform, uh, while others, like the this, this semiconductors, some of the semiconductors took a breather. Some had some good days. And, and basically, the, the uh, semis are at record highs, too. So overall, um, a lot of those are. And uh, so... Again, a nice mix here. Financials were a leader. Industrials were a, were a leader. And then you could take a look at it. Uh, in the S&P, we're just chewing through some of this area here, really getting out above uh, there. That that high on uh, March 3rd was 3137. This is a continuous chart. So we're running into some of that, some decent resistance there. Then you have some of the closing levels as this market fell. Remember, a lot of volume. But but you can see here, this is a melt up. This is a melt up um eight sessions in a row where it's looked really, really strong now out above the 200 moving average and you're seeing a, a stretch for yield. And we've been talking about this in the um, in the Morning Express. Overall, uh, it's zero interest rate policy. Uh, you pension funds, you got uh, investors, you got pro portfolio managers. They have to put this money to work and you're getting a FOMO behind it as well. And it's just it's snowballing higher. That's what we're getting here. So uh, back to the charts. Take a look at the NASDAQ. Just below that record high. Today, the high was, uh, what we get, 97.28. So we're just below that record. And, and looking at it, I mean, it, there's no reason why to think that we're not going to get it at this point. Uh, Russell, we've talked about this chart before. So the Russell never made that new high back in January of last year. Uh, it came in September of 2018. And the 618 retracement, as well as previous lows in last year's recovery, all come here. But 1450, big resistance area. This is where it really started to roll over um, the second wave. So not only got the 200-day moving average there too, so the Russell's not in the clear. Watch this for an indicator. So if this becomes more than a FOMO and there's in the S&P was going to stretch towards its record and, and this thing's going to keep going, you need to see that Russell get out above that 200-day moving average. So keep an eye on that Russell. It's a big chart to watch. Um, but what has it done? You know, it's put pressure on the treasuries. You got better data than expected. And um, that's helped lift yields. You're getting the, uh, just a move into um, you're going to move into uh, the the risk assets because again, you're, you're the treasury, the ten year treasury. You're getting seventy basis points. You're lock your money up for for ten years. Amazon, unbelievable, sold a three year uh, bond, a three year bond on Monday, getting forty basis points. You're locking your money away for three years for forty basis points, and, and you're not you have you enjoy zero upside in Amazon um, if if this if they just completely completely dominate e-commerce as they have as the, as they have been and uh, continue to do so and even get bigger. You enjoy zero upside by holding that bond, but that's where people are chasing yield. They're looking for somewhere to, to lock up money and feel safe about it. And that's the same narrative there, although being 40 basis points is the same reason why you're seeing this money just rush into the market because you, you got that factor pushing things higher through uh, April and now you got the FOMO coming in late now. So, um, this is what we got. This is what we're seeing here. This melt up. It's snowballing higher. So here's the 10-year treasury. 
Um, you're breaking down through the 50-day moving average and the 10-year. Uh, is it in the clear for a breakdown? Not necessarily, but you do got a nice little move here in this 10-year. It's kind of breaking a trend line, and it, it does give you the ability to think that this this is going to head a little bit lower. Now, we uh, we have the Blue Line Trade Alerts program. We are uh, short call spreads in the 10-year. These are deep in the money call spreads. The goal is to collect a good amount of premium, sold them for a point 40, uh, one point and 40 ticks on those. Um, today, we added to that position and we, we this initial position was put on last week. So uh, we, we went into that again today. And we do still have the exposure long in the in the five-year note. So we're looking for a little bit of, of, of that yield curve to move. You're looking for the five-year note to move higher on the, on the prices and you're looking for the 10-year note prices to move lower. Uh, so what ultimately, what you're seeing is, is looking for a steepener of that. Um, but a lot of money, if this 10-year rolls over, a lot of money to collect in those. And um, you know, right, right here, there's no reason to think that it can't happen. Technically, uh, a lot of data still to come out through the rest of, rest, rest of the week. You got ECB uh, tomorrow and non-farm payroll on Friday. So let's take a, uh, just a quick look at the yields. So the yield in the 10-year uh, finished today at 70, basically 75 basis points. Um, pushing up to the highest level we've really seen since middle of April. Can it get through here? That's going to be the question. Can the yields really get above about 80? 80 basis points is going to be a little bit of an area that um, seemed to stall the market uh, previously. Can it get above there? Um, and then so let's move on. Here's some of these risk assets. Look at crude oil. Uh, crude oil, you do have a bit of a spinning top here today. Interesting move. Now, OPEC, we'll go back to this chart in a second. OPEC was supposed to have a meeting tomorrow, and um, that got canceled, that got pushed out. So early on, we saw the move higher out above $38 in July crude oil um, overnight tonight, overnight last night, and there was expectations for, for a three months extension of the cuts, of the pandemic cuts. But there's some, some going back and forth now because some of those uh, countries that didn't fully com- were not fully compliant are um, you know making others hesitant to move forward in, in, in some of these. These are, these are serious cuts. So uh, others are hesitant. But really what it comes down to, OPEC, bait and switch. You got a meeting now later this month, later than it was supposed to. They moved it forward and now they pushed it all the way back. So a bait and switch from, from OPEC. Going back to the chart though, if it starts holding out above here, 37 and a half, 38 bucks, there's no reason to think that this gap cannot get covered. So that's what it looks like. But for now, you do have a spinning top, which can be a directional change. Whether the spinning top happens in the bottom, List the market up or the top. So look for how this how crude oil finishes on a weekly basis tomorrow. It's gonna to be very very pivotal. Now gold, uh, you know we love gold, but uh, this this has been a tough week for gold. And to be honest, coming out of the weekend, we would have imagined that uh, just the tragedy going on in the U.S. We would imagine the gold would have extended those gains, and it just it fell flat on its face. Uh, one thing I, I noted today in the Morning Express is gold. Um, the July, I'm sorry, the June contract, which is in delivery now, got uh, compared to the August, the spread between the two was as wide as about $23 last week, and that's narrowed down to about six bucks. The average spread, I mean, gold spreads between months never, and they very, very rarely in history move like a crude oil spread would. These, these are these are storage costs, inflation costs. I mean, overall, there this is this is not supposed to happen. But there is question with delivery. Um, it's been an ongoing issue back in the when the when the pandemic really just started. Um, what they're going to do with with uh, uh, physical delivery. So some of that stuff has been driving some of these spreads. Uh, and that spread today got from $23 last week all the way back up to six bucks. It leads us to believe some of the weakness and the selling was incurred because of that to narrow that spread um, and just sort of a technical technicality of it. So $1,700 here for gold. We're looking for support. And where did it get down to? It's an area where we've seen this thing respond previously. So uh, it's the breakout of that inverse head and shoulders pattern, $1,700. Now, a lot going on this week and gold respond here. Uh, we, we do like silver too. And um, I don't have the chart up there right now, but uh, overall, let's talk about it. Silver got up out above 1850. Um, there was a, a big trend line, 1850. Got out above there. $19, though, was a, was a peak. There's previous tops. 
So you had a ceiling there, nineteen dollars in uh, silver that it fell back from. But even though we're more than we got more than a dollar from the high today, it seemed pretty constructive, coming back a bit, hugging just below eighteen dollars to the close. We like silver. I mean, gold was down about thirty bucks, silver down about thirty cents. Uh, but silver seems to see seems to that it could feed off a bit of this the strength in equities as where gold um, may not, and it could actually get hurt a little bit here at, with the risk on. So silver needs to do the the heavy lifting, and the fact that neither responded today to a weaker dollar uh, is has been pretty surprising to us. It's um, you know one of the things our narrative is we do think the dollar is going to strengthen, and we've been wrong on that. I've been wrong on that uh, for for about uh, about a month and a half, two months now. It's been chopping around, but uh, this this leg lower over the last. About uh, eight sessions has been has been uh, straight. Uh, and I'll show you the chart here in a second. It's been a straight move lower. So that's been a tough one to, to sort of digest. But overall, um, you know, let's look, just before we jump into the currencies, take a look at uh, copper here. Now, this is a line we, we've shown here in copper before, coming in right about 247. This is previous previous lows, big shelf here. So this is going to be a sloppy area, but this is just a generality to to look at where we are here in copper. And this is the 200 moving average overhead, uh, good resistance up there, but. If it really could chew through here, sustain out above here, yeah, there's no reason to think they can't go and hit that uh, 255, 200 moving average as it runs into what is some great volume down to the downside there, um, which we know, and there's been a lot of volume this against these lows previously. So this is a big area for copper to chew through, um, but if, if the risk assets broadly stay strong, then there's no reason, again, copper could go to 255. It's not very far away. That's going to be the next resistance level. Uh, take a look at this euro, just melt up here. And you know this this started when with basically the EU coming with a, with the budget. Um, you know Germany and France came together uh, to to figure this out and proposed a budget. Now the frugal four that uh, you know is this really going to follow follow through? Um, you know, listen, we we feel that we could wake up any day and and this euro sharply lower because of uh, this this deal falling apart, or again the dollar sharply higher. So um, it's one of the things that we that we look at. Um, but uh, you know it's it's it's. It, can't plan on it, you know, but overall, can this deal get done? Tomorrow, the ECB, I'm sure we'll hear more about it. We'll hear what they want to do. And again, we, we would be surprised to see the euro finish this strong on the week. I think there's definitely reason to come back. And another factor is you've seen better data here in the U.S. And that's one of the things that's been really surprising for us. Going, getting bold up in, in the dollar and getting long in the dollar for us was um, we we were aware that the, the safe haven dollar is acting as a safe haven. When you saw risk on move, the dollar windows would come out of the dollar, the sales of the dollar. So we we've, we've begun to see that, but now we're in May. We're I mean we've gone through May. We're in June now. We're we're, we're now moved through this. There's everybody's going back to work supposedly uh, normalization and and the data it's improved. But but the dollar now it's still trading like a safe haven. It's not responding to the better data. I mean, look at it today: two point seven million jobs lost. This they were expecting nine million. This is extremely surprising to us to not see the dollar. I mean, the dollar trade lower, continue to trade lower. Um, it, it's it's again, it's this the dollar has been acting as a safe haven, and you're continuing to see the wind come out of those sales. But um, on a technical basis, you know, we would lean on a little bit here. If you take a look at this, you get this. It's consolidating wedge pattern here. Um, it's, it, it's a descending wedge, which can be a bullish pattern if it starts to get back above there. So ultimately, you know, we, we want to see the dollar more or less convincingly out above yesterday's high, get above 98 here. Um, it's not asking for much on, on, on the end of the day, given given everything that we have here at the end of the week with ECB and non-farm payroll. Can that dollar close the week above 98? And, and that would be a very, very... Uh, very, very constructive sign for the dollar going forward. All right. Um, again, the, the euro just melting up with all risk assets. But, uh, you know, we're here to help. Give us a call. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. My number, our number here, 312-278-0500. Uh, remember, though, futures trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors.